be the case but it is time for our draft here we go rona the first band coming out from tribe it's going to be answered by the churn walker that's the only band that's been consistent throughout the entire series so far yeah i love how tribe switched it up because the last game they're on a side they actually banned sky and now they banned rona so their draft strategy has been much more damage and look at that first pick kasha come right out and that means <laughs> if batiste isn't picked he could potentially be banned I mean, uh, Kashka's the one that's sitting on Owen too, so I'm not sure if they're going to be changing this up even... I mean, they're obviously going to have to change it up even further because Rona is banned as well, but there's got to be some other strategy that they have up their sleeves if they're still willing to prioritize this Kashka despite the two losses. I wonder if Cloud9 are going to first pick the Black Feather right here because CP Black Feather is one of the better picks against Kashka as far as securing those jungle camps. When she tries to invade, she tries to steal a tree and away from you, we use your on point. If you do it in time or time it correctly, you're able to steal that camp away from her and continue on defending your jungle. So Cloud9, they do have the choice if they want to go that way. Yeah, that's a little risky though, because Tigers just plays his Kasha so well. In the game that Joseph was CP Blackfeather, he got completely dominated by Tigers Kashka. He had like almost double Joseph CS. So I think in this one, Cloud9 may switch it up, potentially maybe even playing, putting Joseph on a Baptiste, which we haven't seen lately. So let's see what they decide to pick the captain here or not. Let's also keep in mind, this is potentially match point. If Cloud9 there do not go. win this game, they are out. So if there was ever a time to completely shake up your draft, right here is this the time. This is a Baptiste captain, not a Baptiste jungle. T C9 back in spring in the Western Unified Championship, the way they countered the Kashka when she was the hottest pick was with the captain, the captain Batiste that they pulled out. And first picking it here, they're going to try to bait uh, Tribe into thinking it's going to be a jungle Batiste, and they're going to try to flex it later on in the draft. Yeah, maybe they mean might give a weapon Batiste, right? Impunity <laughs> played weapon Batiste it phenomenally well, and it can completely shut down Kashka and a Rona composition, actually. So let's see if that may potentially come up. But I think here, the Arden or Fortress ban is, is going to come up because Fortress Kashka is just way too strong. What I really want to see here is the return of Catherine Batiste. That's what I want to see Cloud9 go <laughs> for. Batiste. You know, your, your back is against the wall. You need to pull something out. That huge CC lockdown. It's really Even with the buff to Crucible, I think it could still make magic happen here. It's really strong against Kashka because the multiple CC that comes out from that composition can lock her down for an ex for extended periods of time for your carry to focus her and kill her. She's a very squishy hero. If she's not able to dance around with her mobility, she's very easy to counter. Yeah, I was going to say, she only gets that mobility when she connects with abilities. So yeah. if you can deny the ability usage from Akashka, then she becomes a sitting duck. However, I think Lyra will probably ban it. Lyra Batiste is really strong together. That's a lot and a ton of sustain and protection as well. And with the Catherine Batiste, although it was such a strong comp in the previous meta, Crucible reflex block time got buffed to once from one second to 1.5 seconds. And I mean, that's a huge counter to the double CC compositions of uh, Catherine Batiste. I mean, I'm still expecting Cloud9 to run this as a Captain Batiste. Let's not forget yeah. that. I think, they're gonna, <laughs> I think they're gonna go with the Vox pick right here and save their jungle pick for the last round so that they can flex the Batiste into the roam, leaving Tribe wondering, yep. is it gonna yep. be Captain? So, is it gonna so be they're jungle? they're gonna take Vox and leave Lyra to Kashka Lyra. I think that's extremely strong. What? Okay, there we go. They're gonna take the Vox. They're gonna take the Lyra here and then that's gonna give Tribe the Vox with Grace, which is an extremely strong engage composition that you want to counter the Lyra uh, heal, especially Grace, I think, feel is done, is a little better than Lyra in a late game. They could also even run the Vox Fortress and just take Cloud9, or sorry, Fortress Fortress's ban. Just kidding. <laughs> but they could go. Uh, yeah. The Lorelei, though, I mean, if, if Tribe has ever practiced Lorelei and they were looking to run her coming into this tournament, this is about as good as it's going to get up an opportunity. The last game of the semifinals, it is a best of five. If they win this one, they go to the grand finals. Here we go, Grace, and it's going to be a Vox probably, or a Dajio, because a Dajio will counter the Vox with a Dajio shift build. And then if Cloud9 picks Zio, Vox, that's Zio really, doesn't look too thrilled really about whatever the decision risky. is being made right oh, really? there. He just, he threw his hand there's up and Adagio, walked away. And then there's the Vox pick, potentially coming from Cloud9. If they pick Vox, it's a little risky because uh. Dajio outranges the Vox. And it's a pretty solid pick there from Tribe. I think what happened there is that uh, Zio wanted the Vox pick instead of the Adagio pick, but his coach and his teammates thought the Adagio was the better choice for the team. So they, they decided to go with it, not given Cloud9 the double heal composition with the Batiste, had they chose to go with the Adagio Which for our old Which is essentially triple heal when yeah. you think about it, because it's all focused around that Batiste. But 
Yeah, definitely going to be something to keep our eyes on, though, is, you know, if that's going to cause an issue. If a carry doesn't get the pick that they wanted, you know, are they going to be able to perform to that same level? That's something very, very intriguing to me. Well, it's going to be the Vox going over to Cloud9. I think the key thing to bear in mind is if you're winning, and that's kind of the emotional state during the draft, you should be cool, calm, and collected at this stage. Kind of a little bit of animosity potentially between the team here for Try, but these are our compositions locked on in. What are our thoughts as we head towards this? We'll see how well they do in the early game because it has been Tribe at the forefront. And T Tigers. He is back on the Koshka. Game number four, and we are on to the fold. Joseph and Old School going to take these backs away. And again, Joseph, you know, he, he's not going to be awful against the Koshka early on. Batista's picked into Koshka quite often. Ordained shuts down her mobility, stops her getting super aggressive in the early game. So C9 need to be af not afraid to take some of these early game trades against Tribe. Otherwise, Tribe just run away with all of that farm in the jungle. Over and over again, it's happened. Over and over again, they've claimed these early game advantages and C9 haven't been able to re recover. Obviously, we saw in the second game, they made a massive, massive comeback, but it was such a deficit to work back from. That's like a one in every 50 games in Vainglory. You can't let that happen again, especially in such an important game for C9. Out of Trian and Mex can stand off yet again. Joseph slings out a bad mojo. If they do group up like that, it's going to be a bit of an issue as he will get into his passive. But Tribe and uh, C9 just happy to back, it seems. <laughs> Sid, you're spotting out T-Tiger stop in the back for a brief moment. And once again, they just roam up to the lane. Yeah, not, not willing to take an early game fight. They're actually going to reset quicker than they did last time. Not going to get drawn into denying their rotations. Joseph needs to focus this time on making sure he gets his jungle on rotation, keeps that farm up and matches T-Tigers because T-Tigers is just so good at that. Early minion candy again, just to try and put pressure onto old school, push this lane in, try and make it difficult for him to farm. But then it has been responded to by C9 as well. They have their own. Old School is going to have a little bit of trouble in this lane, especially with Max Green harassing him like that. But with the sustain coming out from Gabe Vizzle, first time we are seeing a Lyra in this series as well as the Adagio. So it's always good to see new picks come through. Gabe Vizzle was actually started with the Oak Heart there as well as that Protector contract. T Tigers and Joseph are going to meet each other once again on this Elder Treant. However, Joseph is taking the majority of the aggro. Both teams rotating down once again for the Mexican stand -up. Joseph didn't quite time his reap there, but it's good because Tribe are going to back off. Right, but what comes out straight away, Joseph, and he's going to go over to Tribe. He went over to Tribe and went over to Dientio of all people as well. He's going to receive that healing as he wanders back up to the lane. Not a massive loss, though. You can lose some early other Triants, and it's not the worst thing in the world. C9 just need to make sure they're matching Tribe, matching them in the middle so that Tribe don't take a massive advantage, and then look to push into Joseph's jungle because that's where Joseph has been put under pressure in especially those forward camps in his jungle. I love the early use of the minion candy again coming through for Cloud9 and Tribe. They're able to just push this wave in and make sure old school can farm in the middle of the lane. And uh, it's a bit harder for DNZ actually to at last hit. Lyra is going to alleviate some of these matchup problems for old school. You know, old school's basically DNZ is looking to get that gift of fire onto a minion to apply that debuff to old school, then look to land some basic attacks, use that range advantage to force him out of lane. But Gabe Bizzle on Lyra is going to help alleviate that a little bit with the healing. T-Tiger's doing what he loves best and taking those front doubles. And he is going to move his way to the Elder Treant as well. This is where it started for Tribe. They're going to go in for it. Sidio isn't going to quite take it. And that is once again, again taken by Dienzio. It's all looking reminiscent of the last three games of T-Tiger's taking firm control so early on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, Dienzio getting the gold as well is going to help. Very similar to old school, actually. They are kind of on even keel at this point in time. Both of the Poison Shiv and a Light Armor in tow. Dienzio spent a bit more on minion candy than old school has, and old school's going to have the boots in his favor right now. But again, everything, uh, even just, you know, losing, losing two Elder Triants is not the worst thing in the world for C9. At least they are contesting it and helping maintain control of their front camps, especially in the jungle. That is really the most important part of this game. Old school's going to get pressured, but there is the Bright Bulwark, and he'll get healed up as well. That's going to be the biggest hindrance for old school, uh, for T Tigers rather, in the early game is that bright bulwark. Gabe Vizzle, as soon as he watches him jump in, you just pop it down, and it's extremely hard for T Tigers to actually navigate to the front of the fight. Max Green's going to get stunned up by the Ordain. A lot of damage is going to land on him. He isn't going to go down just yet, but he's forced rather far back. Cloud9 taking the favor in that tray, but look at where T Tigers is. It's actually moving to the backs of Cloud9 here. He knows where they're positioned. They're actually rotating down to the item shop now, which is open. So he's going to be able to steal away a little bit farm here. 
haven't respawned yet. I think he might have just mistimed the respawn timers on them, but he's happy to wait around as that healing trion comes to life. Joseph is there right now. Joseph has spawned him, but T-Tigers is level six. Ordained is going to stun. Old School is going to come through as well. T-Tigers is in a lot of trouble right now at the back camps. He's trying to dip, dive, and dodge. Crystal Century is going to walk out of there as well. Here comes Old School. Bright Bulwark didn't quite land. He actually dips back in the bush to try and get a bit more damage on to Gold School. T Tiger's going very low. There's he the Ordain, the stun. Torres not quite focusing, and the healing coming through from Dienzio is keeping him alive. However, Old School can't land the last basic attack, and he survives. Dienzio now in the front line, and that is a big heal coming onto Old School to keep him alive. Also, but Dienzio refusing to go down. He's actually just burning up alive. Old School now forced to retreat, and the last basic attack will land, and Dienzio wants again finds first blood for Tribe. It's one of these issues with Lyra when you don't pick up the Fountain first. You, Yes, you have that Crucible, but you don't have the team-wide sustain that the Fountain provides, and C9 took a fight when Max Green had that up and available. They regen back up, and the range of Dienzio on this Adagio was able to push Old School out of the fight once more. C9 put onto the back foot very early on. They're almost over, just over 1,000 gold behind. Very reminiscent of every game that we've seen in this series. Tribe just dominate. Dominate from minute one to minute eight. It's all tribe. All tribe. All tribe. And C9 just can't seem to cope with the pace. There have always been very low kill games as well coming up to the 10 minute mark. We normally see one, two kills go across to tribe. Then they take the first turret and then Cloud9 slowly lose grip on the game. And they forfeit turret after turret after turret. And that one win they did manage to get was a complete turnaround. They were placed in that exact same situation in game number three where they could try and turn it around in the late game. It was just T-Tigers and Dienzio's ability to control the team fights on the sky. That was just... Well, it sealed the deal on their victory. Tribe pushing in now. They don't have a huge minion wave to work with, so they're not going to get a huge amount of damage onto the turret. In fact, they're just going to leave it as it is. Good uh, scout trap placement. It's, it's an interesting scout trap placement because it gives you vision control of that area of the tribe rush, but also just manages to catch onto the gold miner as well. So it's a kind of like a two for one uh, scout trap there. And also because of the positioning is just a little bit different from what you usually see. Usually you place scout trap furthest away in that tri bush to make it harder for the enemy to commit to take it down. Not a lot of people run over that area, so it maintains vision for a little bit longer just because of how different that scout trap placement can be. Now Cloud9 taking the priority in the lane. And this is something we saw in game number one where they were just forcing the lane in and forcing up the uh, melee composition that Tribe did draft up to the, towards the lane to try and defend the turrets. This time around, they are running this Adagio. First time we're seeing it in this series. It's very easy for DNZ to actually just take out these minions, no problem whatsoever. However, the poking coming out from Joseph is only going to get stronger as he did pick up that shatter glass moments ago. Adagio will eventually fall off compared to Vox as this game progresses though. You know, Adagio is supposed to be an early game oppressive uh, carry that's supposed to put pressure onto the Vox. They know that T-Tigers could be behind them. T-Tigers is waiting in the wings, but Gabe Bizzle has spotted him out. They did manage to get through that scout trap. Oh, well, old school runs right into the fray. Oh, Holy Nova onto three. There's the Citra to heal him up. Old school goes down. A twirly death from T-Tigers does finish off the kill. Cloud nine caught. Wrong place, wrong time. Max Green takes advantage. Fearsome some shade used for the disengage, but that turret is going to fall once again. Tribe Gaming come up massive. Old school just... That game, that second game, that resurgence was, was amazing from him, but pretty much... The rest of the time, 75% of the time, he's, he's been making these really odd movements that just aren't normal for him. He, he walked straight into Adagio there, almost face-checked them. It allowed Max Green to get a really good Holy Nova off, and then it allowed T-Tigers to make the flank. But he did that. He walked into them. Breaking point now picked up for old school, and that was the thing. They didn't have vision on that brush. Walked up into the brush, bam, Holy Nova, and that was really it. They are very hard to land as well, unless you land a Benediction, which does apply a small slow. Something that you want to avoid completely. And the burst damage, that's something we need to talk about as well. From T-Tigers, just jumping on old school as he's got the debuff from Dienzio. Such an easy target to take out. Yeah, and that Gift of Fire will slow old school down as well. They probably even then pass over Agent of Wrath either to Dienzio himself or T-Tigers and just hit those hard-hitting basic attacks that dominate the early game. Those Agent of Wrath basic attacks will fall off as the game goes on, but Tribe, they have won their games in the early game, so they pick to facilitate that. And the Koshka and the Adagio are doing just that for Tribe right now. They're going to get an uncontested gold mine. They've extended that gold lead now to just over 4,000, and again, huge disadvantages for C9 to try and have to work back from.
There's the Ordain onto Dienzi. It takes a massive bad mojo. Forces Tribe to actually disengage here. Gabe Vizzle is level seven, so does have the passageway. No bright bulwark just yet. They are happy to just play at range with the chunk damage that Tienzio did take initially. T Tigers now on the retreat. Now going to push back into their own jungle, going for this forward trio. We'll go over to T Tigers once more, but C9 really desperate to look for a fight here as they force Tribe away. No one really picking, I mean, only T Tigers picking up shielding. So if you can get Isle of Joseph onto Dienzio, you should be able to put a decent amount of pressure on him. They are pretty low right now, and C9 seek an opportunity with a large minion wave. They're going to start a fight. Yeah, Bright Bulwark used to actually snare up Max Green. He is forced to actually put the Flask in that regard as well. Tribe, but very, very low. They are going to go in, though. Sigil to speed everybody up out of the fight. A Flask is going to get used in a fountain as well. Nice fear, some shade, but it doesn't quite land as Max Green does block it. DNDO going very low. There's the Versus Judgment. No, oh, the kill from T Tigers. The Twirly Death before it even landed. Two kills go over to Tribe. It's so difficult. When you're in this state of mind, C9 to, to, to come back from a team that looks like they're playing the best vainglory of their life and I tell you what tribe really really are It's just so difficult to get back into that headspace It's gonna be another one of those games where C9 have to come back from the brink of defeat They've done it before they can do it again. This is a championship team a twice winning championship team the twice unified Western Live championship Tribe gaming now did take that crystal century away and again, asserting their pressure in the jungle. A lot of teams we see in North America, they don't prioritize taking the Crystal Century this early, but Tribe's game plan is win early and win quickly. Well, Tribe are doing what C9 does, but they're just managing to execute a little bit earlier than, than C9 usually do. C9 generally come into the game at around eight to 10 minutes, and that's where they start to dominate global objectives. Tribe have been doing it four or five minutes before that and C9 aren't quite able to cope with the pace. There's nothing wrong with the way that they drafted this game. They've got a great draft. It's just the execution, especially from old school, who who's, it seems to be very hit or miss during the series, isn't quite there. And, 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 and I've got to say, Tribe have been almost flawless. Almost every single game they have executed exactly the way they need to. Dienzio has been unbelievably powerful on, on this. Every laner that he's picked up, he's had an excellent game with. And he's also hit that three item spike the Sorrow Blade already picked up. Three, yeah, like you said, three items. The Sorrow Blade, that is over old school. Who only has a Weapon Blade in his inventory. That Gold Miner is going to go down if Tribe are good with it. However, they're just going to jump straight onto old school, the back line, for support, the boots, and the reflex block for the shielding Tribe. As soon as they see old school step up, three members jump in, and he is forced to back off. They're going to flare them out. Cloud9 back to full HP from those sigils. D'Angelo gets caught up in the Ordain as well. The wait for it did come through. Old School trapped once more, but this time around, Joseph's on the other side of the map. Look, there's the massive Yami kind of frenzy, block. but it did get blocked in the end. But Old School, it doesn't matter. Ordain comes through, and the Fearsome Shade does block him up, but D'Angelo manages to take out Joseph and Old School with the burn. They do manage to stop the gold mine going down, though. They kind of achieved what they needed to. They got a kill. They shut down Dienzio. That's worth a little bit of gold as well. Take a look here. C9 able to just regenerate off the back of a, a team fight engage that didn't go their way. And again, every single time they put pressure onto Old School, they run him down with the Gift of Fire. Dienzio looks to get into position for the basic attacks, but C9 with some good, uh, good uh, reflex blocks and bright bulwarks kite back towards their crystal sentry, which gives them a little bit of relief in that team fight. They need to continuously do that though. I mean, old school needs defenses, but they are just so far behind in gold. Dienzio at a three item spike is starting to hit like a truck. He's at that major power spike. The strongest that he's going to be this game is right now. And Tribe are looking to execute every team fight to take advantage of that. That's an interesting scenario. You've kind of put Cloud9 in there. They have to retreat to that Crystal Century to get the, the 0.5 of a man and the damage and the slow that it does put out in order to aid them to win these team fights. Tribe have been focusing that Crystal Century consistently throughout this entire series, making sure that's not a factor when it comes to fighting in the jungle. Goldman is going to get started up yet again. T Tiger's jumping over the wall. Oh, Pouncy Fun is gonna, he's not going to be able to use it at the moment because Ordain is going to just lock him up in place. But old school already about a third HP just by initiating on Dienzio just takes him down to heart. Yes, yeah, I mean, they disgusting pull, damage. They, they pull the trigger as soon as Old School steps up. They jump in, Gift of Fire straight away. Dienzio's waiting in the wings. Oh, he's waiting in the wings. Yummy Candy Friends is going to get blocked again. They're still going to go for the retreat. Joseph already falls down to a twirly death. Bright Bulwark a little bit too late, you've got to say. Gay Fizzle takes the passageway backwards and he ends up falling. That's going to be an ace for Tribe as T Tigers and Dienzio clean the rest up. And the Tribe gaming forever. The Bridesmaid never the bride throughout the entire year in the unified western live championships and the north american vga came from a challenger team 
to a potential world champion, then they look like they're playing like a world champion right now. This is just simple execution again. Every time Cloud9 step up, they jump in, Gift of Fire down, and they burst whoever has that Gift of Fire debuff on them. As soon as someone's down, it's so difficult to peel against what the, uh, the the aggression that Tribe have, and they continue to pressure those carries. But it's just a, a single target burst coming out from tri Tribe. They find a target that they burst, and they take them down very quickly. And then they do that when the skills are up again. They replicate that when the cooldowns are down. And, and with no defenses to speak of, really, for C9, they go down super quickly. It is crazy to think that Cloud9 have struggled to crack the first turret in every single one of these games. They are finally just backing off, it seems, just trying to make sure they can get as much minion pressure in the lane as possible in order to chunk down that turret that is so close to going down. The one win that they did have was a complete reverse sweep of the turrets. They were down to one turret, and that was on a minuscule, like a couple of pixels of HP, and they were able to turn it around completely and annihilate every single turret. This time around, if they can pull that off again, which will, again, rely on old school actually getting these fights and getting stacking up uh, using the breaking point, but right now, Tribe, full domination, full control, and they're back in control of the gold as well. 9,000 in the lead at 16 minutes. It's 9 to 1. They finally took the gold miner also, but Kraken's on the board now. If Tribe end up winning this game, it would be a complete reversal of the Unified Western Live Championships where Cloud9 beat Tribe 3-1. They certainly look in control. They're going straight for the Kraken. C9 are not even at their three item spikes for old school right now. I don't know if they can contest. They learned their lesson, I think, from those gold mines that they tried to contest earlier. They might just have to give this away. Kraken gets unleashed. It's going to start to push down towards C9's base. It'll have to be a heroic defense once more from the Cloud9 squad. They've done it once before in this semi-final. Can they do it again, Jaws? Tribe are just transcending at the moment. Their gameplay feels absolutely pristine. Something you mentioned last game in game number three. They have the range this time though. They have D'Enzio outranging this uh, old school on this box. Right now, it's going to be a miracle, it seems, for Cloud9 to defend this choke point turret. Should easily go down. D'Enzio is just going to be able to chunk out from range. Even Max Green stepping and T-Tiger stepping up the plate. It falls. Choke point turret down. Two turrets remain. And they will be going towards the finals as well. Tensions building as the uh, Wartros do get popped. They are going to go in for this engagement. Right for what goes down. Wait for it as well. It's only going to silence one. Big fear comes through as well, but that massive fountain is going to heal them up. The first turret ends up falling. Cloud9 need a heroic defense now. Holy Nova does get blocked up as well. T-Tags is actually going to focus the turret, but meanwhile on the sideline, Dienzio is 1v2ing. Joseph can't quite take him down. The Kraken is just going to knock on the base. They finally kill Old School. He ends up falling over. Joseph burning alive as well. T-Tigers, he's going to get feared up. Same with Max Green, but the Kraken is on their side. Tribe take the game. They take the series, and they are going to the finals tomorrow. Tribe Gaming, it has been a huge story for them this year to come from the Challenger Series all the way up, all the way up to a potential world champion. You have got a caliber of young player on this team that I don't think the North American VGA has seen in quite a while. C9 have been so dominant for so, so long. They were the North American team of this year. They were the ones that all of your bets would have been hedged on. But Tribe came in so confident. They had huge amount of confidence from D'Enzio especially coming into this tournament. And it means so much to these teams. See how much the World Championships means to both of these teams. Emotions are absolutely everywhere right now. But both teams fought so well, Jaws. History has rewritten itself, like you mentioned. Tribe take it three to one it's an emotional series you can see it on cloud nine's faces but tribe really their gameplay this series has just proved why they're one of the best teams in north america and they will be facing either impunity or ace gaming whoever wins that game later on today in the finals tomorrow